This is the OnePlus Pad, which is attempting to make a breakthrough in the tablet space. There's a handful of good, there's a bit of bad, so let's jump right in. If there is anything OnePlus does right, it's in presentation. The feel in hand, fit and finish, this tablet checks a lot of those boxes. The OnePlus pad has an aluminum body with rounded edges, making it very comfortable to hold while also feeling premium. Plus, in this green finish, not only does it look pretty sharp, but it also matches a few of their products that they've released this year. Take a look at the front, and the screen deviates from other offerings on the market. At 11.6 inches, with a 2800 by 2000 resolution, it's fairly big and has a 7 to 5 aspect ratio. On the spectrum, this puts it roughly between 3 by 2 and 4 by 3, which OnePlus believes is optimized to give you more lines of text while reading or drafting up documents compared to other tablets on the market. Personally though, I can't really tell much of a difference compared to especially something like an iPad, though I do think it offers a good balance for a variety variety of use cases. I've been using it to read manga, watch videos on Netflix, and even to type up video scripts on Google Docs. I've had no issue with it whatsoever. In fact, I think the screen is probably one of my favorite things about this tablet. It's an IPS panel, sadly not an OLED. However, the contrast is surprisingly good, especially when playing back HDR content. And the color, while a touch oversaturated, looks awesome if you don't particularly care about accuracy. I do wish it could get a tad bit brighter, averaging around 500 nits, but with a 144 hertz refresh rate, navigating menus feels like butter. Plus, for those that care, the Dolby Atmos certified speakers on this thing actually sound good in any orientation. They're a bit on the airy side, but have good detail and get pretty loud with minimal distortion. That's good for casual listening. <coughs> Breath. Okay, so the OnePlus pad looks the part, but how does it perform? This thing is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 9000, which we don't see too often here with devices in the US, but it's a powerful little chip. Built on TSMC's 4 nanometer process, it's efficient and even beats out Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip with sustained load according to some synthetic benchmarks. That, alongside the fact that it's paired with 8 gigs of RAM, means that this tablet flies. Simpler tasks and navigating around the UI feel incredibly smooth, though a lot of that can also be the perceived speed that comes with that 144Hz refresh rate. But where performance really matters is with more intensive workloads, such as gaming. In this regard, the OnePlus Pad doesn't hold a candle to the 10th generation iPad, which is able to push higher resolutions in gameplay and more consistent frame rates in titles like Call of Duty Mobile and Genshin Impact. However, it still does a decent job playing these titles nearly maxed out at 60 fps. On paper, at 479 bucks, this tablet is very competitive, putting it in spitting distance to that 10th generation iPad, which costs 450, as well as the $529 Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE. Man, that name is super long. This does trail behind in performance compared to our OnePlus, but is a more direct competitor to it than the iPad because it does run Android 13. But before you run out to get a OnePlus pad of your own, there are some pretty serious drawbacks we need to discuss. The first pain point I want to bring up is with the battery life. The OnePlus Pad has a 9500 milliamp hour rating, which OnePlus says is good for over 12 hours of video playback or over a month of standby. However, in the three weeks that I've spent with the pad, I found it to generally perform under those estimates in moderate load, AKA browsing the web, occasionally gaming and watching YouTube. Way too often, I found myself needing my charger in the middle of the day. This issue might be isolated to my review unit in particular because I've seen reports from other tech YouTubers saying that the battery life is actually very good. In its defense, there is 67 watt charging with the included power brick, filling up the battery from 0 to 100% in 80 minutes. But ideally, you wouldn't have to rely on it, especially if power is out of reach. But probably my biggest gripe with the OnePlus Pad is the software. Oh. 
The OnePlus Pad runs the brand's Oxygen OS interface atop Android 13. On a phone like the OnePlus 11, I like the aesthetic and simplicity that it offers. But on a tablet, Oxygen OS misses one key feature that holds it back from being useful and productive. And that is a proper app switching taskbar to easily manage programs you are using, kind of like how you would on a desktop. It doesn't have a taskbar. I mean, it has like the bar on the bottom, like any Android phone would. However, I would like to switch apps. There's no intuitive way to do that. This makes the multitasking very clunky, kind of akin to iPads from five years ago with how linear it is. Now, luckily, some multitasking features made it over from OnePlus's phones, like split screen and the sidebar to help it out. But it feels like OnePlus threw Oxygen OS on a big screen without any of the nuance and fit and finish required for a proper tablet in 2023. <laughs> Never settle might be the company's mantra, but someone clearly missed the memo. They've been settling since the OnePlus 3. Ooh. My own personal disappointment also carries over to the pad's optional accessories, which look pretty damn close to what Apple offers for their tablets. However, the execution isn't quite there. The $99 pen does attach magnetically to the pad for easy transport and wireless charging, but it regularly misses my inputs while navigating Android, which I think is literally the bar you have to clear to justify me buying your pen. So that's a pass for me. At least it doesn't plug into the bottom of the tablet. Okay, well, these nuts got him. <laughs> when in doubt. When in nut. <laughs> Then there's the $149 magnetic keyboard case, which is actually kind of all right. While the typing layout suffers due to the tablet's awkward aspect ratio, the keys themselves feel nice to type on and have decent throw. And the trackpad is also surprisingly responsive. However, when you take a step back and do the math, outside of taxes, shipping, and promotions that OnePlus might have on their website, the whole OnePlus pad with its additional accessories adds up to $727 here in the US. And that's a tough pill to swallow. It is insane for something that's supposed to disrupt the market. The only thing it's disrupting is its success. Got him. <laughs> These nuts. <laughs> Also, the other day, Google announced the Pixel tablet, which I think is a really strong competitor to the OnePlus Pad. The two products certainly differ in philosophy, but there are similarities in performance level, certainly in price. But I think where the Pixel ultimately wins out is probably in multitasking, which is where I think a lot of the value is. I mean, look, there's a dock with apps. I'll have to get one in the office to try out for myself, but it's looking to be a really solid choice compared to the OnePlus Pad, especially if you are planning on using it for any bit of productivity. If anyone from OnePlus is listening, I think you guys can do better. Google already made a ton of headway with Android 12L and Android 13 to optimize the tablet experience and better compete with the iPad. And that includes the addition of a taskbar, which on its own sold me on the Android tablet life. Not even kidding, on my Z Fold 4, it is a lifesaver. I bring this up because if I didn't make it abundantly clear already, Oxygen OS is built on Android 13. So why is OnePlus paving over important features that Google themselves already developed? Because they never settle. Luke? <laughs> Guys, take what you can get, especially when you consider that Apple and Samsung dominated the tablet segment last year with over 80% of sales combined. It also says a lot that Samsung rolls with what Google has to offer and has a way better experience by it. Yeah, buy that one, not this one. Got him, these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, if you haven't clicked off the video already, you like it. <laughs> OnePlus takes a lot of pride in their own engineering and design that Oppo definitely has nothing to do with. Never sell. Stop putting them on blast. <laughs>
But this is a great example of how that ego can get in the way of making a competitive, well-rounded product. It's certainly a harsh assessment, especially considering that it's OnePlus's first foray in this product category. However, I genuinely don't know why anyone would get the OnePlus pad over its competitors. Sure, it's another fighter in the ring, but that's simply not enough to make a good product, especially when we know that Oppo and OnePlus have the resources to make it happen. But let me know, what do you think about the OnePlus pad? And was I too harsh? Let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel. Never settle. Never settle. These nuts. <laughs>